It was just before 1.30 Friday morning when Elkhart police arrived on this lot. They were able to find tracks and a damaged fence on the property. They were also able to find 25 cut catalytic converters and the two men accused of stealing them. It happened in this parking lot with almost no other cars around. A woman says what she planned as a quick trip to the mall with her daughter became scary fast. Many asking the council to give whatever money is needed to keep motels for now going. Others say they just can't justify the funding. That's from that rain earlier today, along with the above freezing temperatures. But otherwise, traffic here right now is still pretty close to normal. Of course, outside the mayor's office in Elkhart, and a sad ending to a search that's lasted several days. Just about an hour ago, Mayor Robertson issued a statement saying the family is devastated. And as we first reported, the silver alert was issued Monday when Garvin Robertson was last seen driving his 2022 Honda CRV. Ray says while the site was purchased by Mullen months ago, production for these vehicles here in St. Joseph County is expected at the end of 2023 or beginning of 2024. I'll have more on that tonight at 10 and 11. Investigators say they found the victim in a car with a gunshot wound. Now South Bend police are looking for answers. It's live for us at the County City Building here at 6 o'clock and this vote was originally scheduled for the 17th, but it was pushed back. That move came after a string of public comments raising concerns at that meeting. And since the commissioners have been responding to questions through email, even changing the wording on the proposal to clarify and address the most common concern, ensuring that political representation for parties will be equal on both sides. Now, commissioners say they received more than 40 emails and responded to as many as they could. They also wanted to add it's less about getting rid of the board and more about moving it under leadership. What the alleged porch pirate doesn't know? She caught it all on one of these. Ring footed. Yeah, St. Joseph County says it's looking to not only improve mobility for cars looking to pass here, but also railway safety. Well, all of our local cities, including Inda and the Indiana Toll Road, are gearing up for these blizzard conditions. And that means as soon as the snow starts falling, those trucks are ready to hit the streets. Okay. And, and police expect to be gathering information there for a few more hours. Neighbors are still out here as well. A number of them were home when they say they heard those shots here in this neighborhood around 3.30. Police tell me they found the male victim here and he was pronounced dead at the scene. The coroner is here now as well. So far, no arrests have been made, but these cars waiting here, something you may not have to do much longer. A $1.2 million federal grant would allow St. Joseph County to do a study to find the best design for an overpass here. The idea is to not only help get cars through quicker, but also make it safer. All right, as we get ready to do all of our holiday shopping, one woman says she has lost a gift. Yes, yeah, she did. A South Bend woman says a bold, brazen thief stole her 65-inch flat-screen TV right off her porch. WSBT 22's Ann Lurie spoke with her today and joins us now here in the studio. And Ann, it was only minutes from when it was delivered and when it was gone. And it happened in the middle of the day. She says her neighbors saw it happen and it left them fearing it could happen to them too. Myra Garcia lives in South Bend off of a busy street and in an area where she says she knows all of her neighbors. Until now, she believed it was a safe neighborhood. That's until she and her kids left home to get groceries Wednesday afternoon with a new TV out for delivery. When they say it's out for delivery and I'm running into Walmart, what are the chances that it's going to get delivered while the, the, the one hour that I was gone? So it got delivered. She was notified the TV was on her front porch. Neighbors say just minutes later, a man stopped in front of her house, grabbed the TV, and drove off. But what the alleged porch pirate doesn't know? She caught it all on one of these. Ring footage on her front door shows a FedEx driver carrying the TV with the help of a stranger. So it was at 11.15 when the guy dropped it off. We didn't, you know, my it was being delivered. I'll be on my way. I was down at Walmart. You know, how long does it take to get here? I was at checkout, right? And then at uh, 11.35, so... 20 minutes, there's a guy driving by and taking my TV. What's even more bizarre? It appears to be that same Good Samaritan coming back to take it. Just, it just sucks. Like, you know, 
he paid for this TV. And it was on sale, you know, Black Friday sales, but still it's just like, bro, we work, we have kids, you know. She says the stranger appears to come out of nowhere in the video and that he made it appear he was there to help. Now she's warning her neighbors so this tactic doesn't work again. Garcia brought her footage to the police station tonight in hopes for an investigation. The Better Business Bureau says it has reports of people following delivery drivers to take packages. It warns to get shipping insurance and a tracking number. John. Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. It's a scary, serious and rare infection. And some people, including one Mishawaka family, have never heard of it until it affects someone they know. WSBT 22's Ann Lurie joins us at the live desk. So Ann, the family said it looks like a run of the mill rash, but it quickly became something more. That was the case for their two year old daughter Zeta. In less than a day, she had to be taken to the ER and now her mom has a warning for other parents. Zeta is like many other two-year-olds, happy, healthy, and always on the move, until New Year's Eve when the playing stopped. She had like a little spot on her chin that looked like maybe rug burn or something. She had a fever, she just kind of laid there moaning, didn't want to be touched. Zeta's mom, Cassandra Zwerzinski, noticed something was wrong when that spot began to spread. That's when she took Zeta to the ER, where Cassandra says more spots were popping up in front of her eyes. Um, almost like a chemical burn, like the top layer of skin was peeling off, so it was all red and raw. Some of the spots bled. She was told Zeta had scalded skin syndrome, a rare infection that children younger than five are at risk for. Warning signs include redness of the skin, fever, and irritability. Epidemiologically, they say it occurs in, you know, one in a million to two million people. It's usually caused by a bacterial infection, so you have to treat the infection, and then from the body's physiologic standpoint, it acts very much like a burn, and so it requires a lot of the same treatment that burn victims require. Some cases even need treatment from a burn unit. To diagnosis, Dr. Mark Fox at the St. Joseph County Department of Health says he's seen only once throughout his 20 years in the field. It is scary, and then you wonder, like, why my child? <laughs> Why is this happening to her? Zeta was treated with an IV and antibiotics and spent four days in the hospital. Luckily, she's well on her way to recovery, still taking antibiotics at home. Cassandra says it was mother's intuition that made her take action. So I think when you see something that you think is, is a scrape spread like that, it's good to get some medical attention. So that Zeta can be a happy and healthy little one once again. Because the warning signs of this infection start like many pediatric illnesses, it's important to keep a close watch in case symptoms worsen. If you're worried your child has it, Dr. Fox says it's best to get them checked by a medical professional. At the Live Desk and 3, WSBT 22 News. A major save by a South Bend officer caught on police body cam. As we first told you earlier this month, two people were hurt during a house fire in the 4000 block of Addison Street. Now, what we know right now is that one of those lives potentially saved by police. WSBT 22's Adler Reese spoke with that officer today along with the fire victim's family. If you ask Officer De La Rosa, it was just a normal day on the job, but for the family of a paralyzed woman outside of her burning house, the bravery of the first first responder means the world. Now, before we share this story, we want to mention the family did give us the okay to share the following footage, but we do want to warn you, some may find it disturbing. When responding to a call for a structure fire just down the road, Officer De La Rosa says she wasn't expecting to roll up on the biggest fire she's seen yet. De La Rosa was just sworn in last July. And on an early January morning, she found herself as the first one on the scene with two survivors in the street. My number one like response was get the people away. And I saw them laying kind of like by the driveway. So I yelled for them like you need to step back, get away from the fire. And the one of the, um, I think it was like the daughter that was on there. She's like, you need to help her. She's paralyzed. That's when Officer De La Rosa found Nadina Halamar, a woman who's now a quadriplegic due to a car accident 17 years ago. She was brought out by her daughter, who was already in the home. These moments show the house in flames as Officer De La Rosa found the two. So I'm like, okay, we got to figure out how to get her away. I told the daughter, grab her legs 
and I told her before I carried her, this is going to hurt. She helped Helimar's daughter quickly move her to a safer location. Her bravery not taken for granted by Helimar's family. LaShawn Pepperaldo is Helimar's sister. She says she's amazed at the compassion of a stranger. Just to like have no thought about herself or themselves and just put herself in harm's way to save like my family. And despite the uphill battle this family faces following the tragedy, Pepperaldo says she's seen a spark of hope through Officer De La Rosa being reminded good people exist. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I hope that my sister can say something to her. Um, but just thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Helimar is receiving treatment at the University of Michigan and has undergone multiple surgeries. But the family says it's also humbled by the community support, including a fundraiser for them this weekend. I'll have that information on our website. In the newsroom, Anne Lurie, WSBT 22 News.